Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name's Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. I am so excited to share this tutorial with you guys. I am not the original creator of the Vertical Beach Tumblr. I believe it was Sandy's Organized Chaos that first came up with this design, but I did want to create a tumbler and put my own spin on it. I will be using different materials than she uses and I wanted to mimic my tumbler off of my epoxy beach art that I do. So I did create my tumbler in different layers. I used white wave from Artistry Epoxy as well as UV resin to really get that depth and dimension that I was going for and I'm super happy with the results. Listed above are the things we're going to cover today, but if you guys have questions or I accidentally leave out a step, please feel free to ask below and I will come back and answer them. If you guys want to check out my other groups, I do have a tutorial group on Facebook. I have our exclusive Damn Fancy Tribe and our Drunk Flamingo Glitter group. All of those are going to be linked in the description in case you guys want to check them out. But for now, let's get started on this tutorial. Alright y'all, so the first thing we're going to do is base paint our tumbler. I'm going to be using Color Shot paint today. This was my first time using Color Shot paint for a full tumbler. I have used one colors for a couple different things, but I really liked these colors at my local Walmart, so I decided to pick them up. We are going to be using Island Girl and Champagne. I am also using the matte white to base coat my cup. If you guys have watched my tutorials, you know that I pretty much base paint all of my tumblers with white before I add any other color. This just really helps to make whatever color you want to use pop a little bit more. It makes that color a little bit more vibrant than if we were spraying it on a basically gray base. It was very windy this day, if you guys can tell. I had my paint going everywhere. So now that that white is dry, we are going to spray it with our champagne and Island Girl. Champagne, or sorry, this is called Cheers, not champagne. It is a champagne but it is called Cheers. I couldn't remember the name of it. So Cheers is going to be the color we are going to use for our sand. So I'm just spraying one strip up the middle and then I am spraying a little bit on either side. I am also going to be spraying the bottom. So I'm just turning it slightly so that my spray paint is just kind of misting the side we are not spraying it straight on you guys can see how i'm just spraying it on the side so it kind of mists a little bit kind of fades into the white and you're just going to make your champagne strip basically as large as you want your sand so i did want my sand to be a little bit more than half of my tumbler because I knew that I wanted my white waves to come on top of the sand. So if I had a really skinny sandy base, I wasn't going to have much room to work with. So now we're going to spray our Island Girl And we are going to do the same thing. I am spraying one strip up the middle and then I'm just misting on the sides just so this blue is going to fade into the champagne color. And I did also spray the bottom. I got a little bit too much blue on the bottom so I had to go back and spray a little champagne. And this is essentially what our cup looks like. It's almost half and half. I have a little bit more champagne, 
but again, that's just going to be your personal choice. So once that spray paint is dry, we are going to apply our glitter. We are going to be using glitter glue from Artistry Epoxy. If y'all have not tried this, y'all need to get on it. I love this stuff. I have used it several times to apply glitter now, and I never use Mod Podge. You guys know I hate Mod Podge, but glitter glue is 20 times better. It stays tacky for quite a while. It does not dry quickly like Mod Podge. You do not get any weird streaks. So on days where I don't feel like going outside to spray my tumbler with clear spray paint, which is typically how I apply my glitter, I just use this and it works just as well, if not better. Again, I do have a discount code down below for artistry. So if you guys have not tried their products, I definitely suggest it. My favorite products they have are their glitter glue, color fix paints, and their one-to-one -one fast set. So I am just applying a decent amount of this glitter glue to the base of my tumbler. I'm just making sure that the coverage is even. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit for you guys. It's pretty straightforward at just applying the adhesive to the cup. But y'all can see how it kind of evens out. There's no splotchy marks, there's no lines. It kind of fades into each other. So we are going to start with Soul Taker. That is the color I wanted for my beach. It has a little bit of a pink tint to it, which is what I wanted. I almost used just a regular pink glitter, but decided to still go in the champagne family. And I am just kind of pouring this and letting it cascade down the side of my cup so that we get a nice little blend, a nice little fade. And the next color we're going to use is Mojito. All of these colors are from the Drunk Flamingo. And I am applying this with a tea strainer. This really helps my ombres. It really helps getting colors to fade into one another. I am just sprinkling it right next to the champagne color that we applied. And it just overlaps slightly and creates a really nice blend. Then the next color we're going to use is Mermaid Lemon Drop Cocktail. This is also from the Drunk Flamingo. It is kind of a medium teal color. And again, we're just going to sprinkle it right into that color and let it fade in. I think I applied a little bit too much of my lightest color, but I still made it work. The next color we're using is not yet listed on my site. It may be by the time this video is released, so I don't have a name for it yet. This is just a fine navy. It is very similar to Blue Whiskey if you guys have that, but this is just the plain navy. It does not have any colors mixed into it. And I am just kind of going through, touching up any of those lines that I may need to touch up a little bit. So now I'm just kind of blending the medium teal into the dark blue. Just getting a good, a good blend. And this is how our tumbler is looking so far. I already loved how it looked. 
So now that we have the sides done, I am now going to do the bottom of the tumbler. I decided not to pop this one off. Um, if you guys did not know, on the bottom of all Steel Magnolias tumblers, you can pop off the bottom and use it for a glitter butt or a rhinestone it, fun stuff like that. I did that for my um, flock box tumbler for this month as well as my watermelon tumbler. They're just really fun and different. But for this one, we're just going to glitter it. So I applied a little bit of the glitter glue. We're just sprinkling a little bit of each color. So once all of my colors are applied, I will let this dry. And then I will seal it really well with Rust-Oleum two times. And then we will be ready to epoxy. So this is what our tumbler looks like after two layers of epoxy. My epoxy of choice is Artistry Epoxy's Fast Set. If you guys would like to try it, I do have their link below as well as a discount code. And after that epoxy had cured, I sanded this tumbler really well. You guys can see it's a little dull because it has been sanded. I am also going to use White Wave from Artistry Epoxy. And I mix that with a little bit of UV resin. This is not regular epoxy or resin. This is UV resin. I prefer to use CCDIY's UV resin. It's a thicker formula, so it's not going to slide off of your cup as easily. And I do want to point out that I did add one drop of hair oil. I thought that I filmed it on camera, but I must not have. But one drop of hair oil does help to create cells. I used to use that in my geode art when I created that. And now we're going to get started on making our waves. So I am just going to use a gloved finger because I don't want to waste an entire glove just for one little section. So I am going to put one line of UV resin and smooth it out. And then we're going to put a small line of the white wave mixed in with the UV resin. If you guys have worked with beach art before or have made beach art, you know to get good waves, you need a clear layer of epoxy and then the white. That helps the waves kind of fan out a little bit. So I figured that I would try the same thing but using UV resin and see how it turned out. So I'm going to use my heat gun on about medium heat and we're going to heat this UV resin and just help move that little white wave. And since this is on a curve, you do have to work with it a little bit differently. You definitely have to work quicker. If you notice any drips that are dripping down your tumbler from the UV resin, you can just quickly wipe them off. So I have a little bit of drips here. I'm just taking a glove and we're just wiping those drips away. You could sand them later if you wanted to, but I like to try to not do as much work as I can. <laughs> it's easier just to catch the drips while they're dripping instead of trying to sand them down later. So now we're going to 
put our UV light over this. And when I do my UV light, I really just hold my UV light over the drips or the waves to stop them from moving because each time I apply another layer and then apply my UV light, that original layer is going to get hit with the UV light as well. So everything will be cured by the time that you're finished. But I also prefer to use the sun to get a really good cure on UV resin. So once I'm done with this cup, I will take it outside and let it sit in the sun for about 20 minutes just to make sure everything is good and cured. So now we're going to do our second layer for our waves. And you guys can see that I applied this particular layer a little bit differently than my first one, just so I get some variation in my waves. I don't want all of my waves going the same direction or looking exactly the same. And I also wanted to say for the white wave, you really don't need a whole lot. You just need a couple drops mixed in with your UV resin. Or if you're using regular epoxy to do waves, you just you still just need one or two drops. It goes a long way. And you guys can see that my little white line is really thin as well. I did not apply big globs because I don't want it taking over my entire tumbler. So now we are going to hit this wave with our UV light again. I am just cleaning up some more of these little drips. So I really only cure each layer for about one minute. Then I go to the next layer, cure it again. And right now, both of those layers are getting hit with the UV light. So it's getting that extra cure time. So now I'm going to go in and do another layer. And this one is going to be on the sand. So another little gloved finger, another layer of UV resin. And we are just smoothing that out. And when I smooth it out, I don't make it super thin because I still want that white to be able to have movement. So even here, I'm adding a little bit more and I'm bringing that curve down a little bit. And then we're going to go add our white wave mixture. And I didn't like that little swirly, so I took that off of there. <laughs> and we are going to hit it with heat again. Really help those waves kind of grow and fan out. And then we are going to hit this with our UV light.
So I am going to speed this up a little bit. I did one side at real time so you could kind of see exactly how I did it and the steps that I used. And I am going to speed this up a little bit. For those of you that still like to see how I do things, So I'm going to do the other side now, and it's basically going to be the exact same steps that I did on the first side. This is just sped up a little bit, so don't think that you have to go this fast. Real speed was the first half. If you guys think that you have the hang of this particular step, you guys can skip ahead about one minute and then we will be on our next step. And if you get any weird kind of waves, you can always just use a little popsicle stick to smooth everything out. I do that all the time. Then we will do our second little wave. Use some heat to get those waves fanning out. This one needed a little bit more white in it, or sorry, clear. It wasn't having much movement. So if your waves aren't moving a whole lot, you can add a little bit more of the clear resin and that will help the white start to move a little bit better. So this is our last wave. And I was getting a little bit more drips on this side. And once this is complete, I'm going to take this outside and I just set it on my outside table and let it cure really, really well. But I was really happy with how this was turning out. So, so now the UV resin is completely dry and we are going to apply our coat of regular epoxy. Again, this is Artistry's one-to-one -one fast set epoxy. I just mixed up equal parts. I think that I mixed a little bit too much for this one, but I did have some molds handy. Typically, I do about 20 milliliters for a cup this size. Um, I'm doing a 24 plump and a 32 plump from the Steel Magnolias. And 
and I just mix my epoxy until it is clear. I do not set a timer. I just mix until there are no more striations in my epoxy. I scrape the sides. I scrape my stick, scrape the bottom. Just so I'm sure that everything is mixed really well. All right, guys, so we are going to epoxy our cups. I always apply mine just wiping from top to bottom. That way I can feel if anything is dry. When I do my bottoms, I just apply a very small amount. And then I wipe from bottom to top to smooth out any globs of epoxy that may be on there or if maybe one section has a little bit too much. And once our epoxy is on there and smoothed out, I am going to grab my torch and I'm going to pop all of the bubbles. I do use the big torch. I was scared like y'all to use it at first, but <laughs> once you use it one or two times, you get used to it. And it really does make a difference in popping bubbles. And once this layer cures, we will be ready for our next step. All right, guys, so this layer of epoxy is completely cured. I mixed up a little bit more epoxy and we're going to use liquid gold leaf just to add a little bit of gold in our waves. I use this often for a lot of my projects. It's some of my favorite stuff to use. They also have a silver leaf if you guys prefer silver. So we are going to start by just applying a layer of epoxy to both of our tumblers. And we're going to smooth them out just like we would normal. This tumbler kept wanting to move up on my turner, which was driving me crazy. I love these cups, but they're so long. <laughs> And once we have all of our epoxy on, we are going to apply our liquid gold. And if you guys do not want liquid gold on yours, this would be the step that you would decal and then apply your next coat of epoxy. So we are just going to apply a thin line and I am just following my waves. And then I'm going to smooth it out with my finger because I don't want such a harsh line going through my cup. I just really want them to kind of flow in with the waves and just give a little bit of that pop of color where you look at it first and you think, oh, it's a beach cup, and then you see, oh, there's gold in it. <laughs> so I'm going to do the same thing to the next cup. We're just doing really thin lines. And we're just going to smooth these out as well. So 
So right now I'm just kind of cleaning up some of those gold lines. If there's a little bit too much gold in one section, you can just wipe it off with your finger. If you want to add a little bit more, you can do that as well. So I am just, again, popping bubbles with my torch, but also when I use heat on the liquid gold leaf mixed with epoxy, it helps cells come out. So I just hit it with my heat, then move it to the side a second, go back and hit it with heat, move it to the side. I don't keep it concentrated in one area for too long because we don't want to overheat our cup or catch it on fire. But once this layer of epoxy cures, we're going to be ready to sand it really good and decal. My cups are sanded really well. I did use my hand sander because I did have a few bumps still from the UV resin where it dripped a little bit in certain areas. And looking at these videos now, I'm thinking that a matte beach cup would be really cool looking too. Um... <laughs> But for now, this one is a glossy beach cup full of sparkle. This decal was something I just printed out in silhouette. I believe the font I used was Menline, Mendlined, maybe. I can never remember the exact word for it, but it is a very skinny font. I even did a small offset for this just to make it a little bit more bold. But I believe it's M I N D L I N E, mend line. And I'm just using gold chrome vinyl. Again, this is also from my local supplier where I typically get all of my vinyl. They do ship, they are called JSI Designs or Perfect Press HTV. They are linked in my description. And I am just going to apply my decal in the darkest part of my beach or my ocean. I know a lot of people apply their quotes or names in the sand, but I just really like the look of the sand kind of fading into the water. And I didn't really wanna mess that up with a decal, so I left that as is. But I thought that the darkest part of my ocean where kind of the back part or where the waves come together, I thought that was a really good place for a decal. So that is what we ended up with. And I clearly needed a new piece of transfer tape, but I will use it until there is no tack left. So we are going to get that lined up. I really like the pop of gold against the dark blue. And once that decal has sat for a little while, we are again using Artistry's Fast Setting Epoxy. This epoxy can be used as the final coat. It does not have an odor. It has great UV protection. and it is super shiny. The finish of this epoxy is probably better than any others that I have tried. I used one company exclusively for about four years, 
but when I tried Artistry's epoxy, I switched completely. I still have about a gallon left from the previous company I used, and it is just sitting in my garage because I just love the finished result of Artistry so much. But with this final layer of epoxy, you guys can really kind of see the depth of all of these waves start to come out. So we have a couple different layers of the white wave, and then we have the gold that is on top of that. And then of course the final layer of clear, which really kind of brings everything together. So again, I will pop all of my bubbles. If I need to, I will apply one final coat of epoxy. I typically do apply two coats of epoxy over decals, but once you add your final layer, your cup will be complete. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. It was a little bit different um, than beach cups that I have seen before. I like to try to put my own spin on things if I can, or see how different products will work. And I'm really happy with how these came out. If you guys decide to try your hand at a tumbler like this, please post it in my tutorial group or my glitter group. I love to see what you guys come up with based on tutorials that you watch from me. So we are just popping these bubbles one more time. I typically will hold my torch there for about 14 seconds because I know that's about one full rotation on my turner. And then we will be complete. And here are some completed pictures for you guys to see. Again, I just love how this cup turned out. I love the cells that you get with using the UV resin and white wave. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial and I appreciate you guys for watching. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group or our Damn Fancy Tribe, both on Facebook and are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.